Hello and welcome everyone. Uh, this is Nariman, um, Media Relations Executive here at Cision. Um, if this is the first video you watch for us, Media Coffee is a new series hosted by Cision where we interview journalists from leading media organizations um, in big markets globally to answer some of our clients' top questions on how to best communicate with the media. Uh, Cision is a global provider of earned media, um, software and services for PR agencies and communications professionals as well. If you would like to know more about us, please visit, visit our website. Uh, you can also drop us an email or follow us on our social media account. I'm happy to welcome Chris McCain, a political reporter from the Press Association, and also um, he provides analysis for PA's Media Point Wire. Um, welcome, Chris. I'm so happy to have you today. And I would like to start by if you can give us a brief about yourself and just about your background. Uh, yeah, hi. Yes, nice to, nice to be here. Um, yeah, so uh, I'm one of PA's political reporters, PA's the UK and Ireland uh, wire service. Um, so I'm based in the House of Parliament in Westminster. Not there now, obviously, but uh, that's where I usually am. Um, and yes, covering uh, covering you know the the political events, um, and mainly from a, an analysis uh, perspective for uh, Media Point, which is our service for non-media customers. Um, but uh, yeah, before that, I worked in local news um, as a general reporter and then as a political reporter. Uh, first for the Surrey Advertiser and the Liverpool Echo, um, and before that I did other things. Could you please just give us like a brief about uh, the media landscape here in the UK? I think it, it's one of the frequent questions that we get asked usually by our clients. Yeah, sure. So uh, obviously we start with BBC, that's the, you know, by far the biggest uh, kind of news provider in terms of readership and, and reach of, you know, globally famous uh, organisation. Um, and then uh, in terms of uh, newspapers, we have uh, kind of a few, a few main ones. Uh, there are very few, you know, we used to call them broadsheets, but only the Telegraph is actually published in broadsheet form, but we've got the, the Times and the Sunday Times, uh, the Guardian and the Observer, uh, Telegraph, um, and Financial Times, uh, they're the kind of the, the main broadsheets. And then we've got tabloids, Daily Mirror, The Sun, Daily Mail, The Express, um, and, uh, and a few others. Uh, and then kind of below that, we've got, obviously, there's a, there's a sizable local news uh, environment. It's, it's obviously it's not as big as it once was, but, um, you know, reports of its death are exaggerated. Uh, there are kind of the, the main publisher is uh, Reach PLC, who declare an interest, I used to work for them. Um, they own most of the major uh, local news outlets, the Liverpool Echo, Manchester Evening News, things like that. Um, and as well as the Daily Mirror and Daily Express. And then there's, uh, there's a few other smaller ones, NewsQuest, uh, owned by the American giant Gannett, uh, and Archant and JPR Media. Um, and then, uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of it. Obviously the, we have, um, you know, Sky News, Channel 4 News, ITV News, so, you know, TV channels have their own news, uh, news programs. And, um, there's a kind of, uh, a growing, um, particularly in, in politics, which I, which I cover is a growing kind of online, uh, news website, uh, presence devoted to to that and, and I'm sure there are other websites devoted to other sectors that I don't know anything about but yeah uh, so yeah that's uh, that I guess is, is, is kind of uh, is kind of it really. Tell us a little bit about PA distribution reach here in the UK and in Ireland as well um, and do they distribute outside of the UK if you if you're aware of that? Um, I'm not aware of, uh, of much of their distribution outside the UK. So as I say, it's, it's the UK and Ireland wire service. So it provides uh, copy and pictures and video and uh, graphics as well for, uh, or basically all of the all of the news organisations in the UK. Um, every, pretty much everyone's signed up to uh, to get the wire. Often PA will be you know one of the few people staffing a particular. Um, 
event um, or you know one of the few people allowed in because they you know, they'll get it to you know, get it to everyone. Um, so it's yeah, it, it's it's very widespread in the UK. Um, some places, uh, particularly local news outlets, will will draw just stories straight off the wire and put them on their websites. Um, and other places will kind of, you know, feed the use it to use the quotes from the PA wire to feed their uh, their coverage. Um, so uh, yeah, it's 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 pretty widespread in the UK and and in Ireland. Abroad, I I don't really know is the answer. Um, I suspect it's not quite as uh, as uh, prevalent, um, but but certainly yeah, pretty much everyone. Will every news organisation in the UK will, will get it? Mm-hmm. Absolutely understood. Um, then moving on, uh, obviously one of Citizens' main um, services is distributing press releases for our clients. Um, so I wanted to ask you from your own perspective and experience as well. Uh, what do you think is, uh, or how is the attitude about press releases here in the UK? Um, I'll be honest, it's it's not overly positive um it kind of you know we get hundreds and hundreds of emails um from from various uh places and a lot of them are kind of a lot of them will be ignored um but you know they they can be useful uh it the things i would i would say about that is it depends on you know targeting it Targeting your press releases correctly, I think, is the big, uh, you know, the biggest thing. And um, and kind of putting some thought into why, you know, what makes it a what you know why it's a story. One of the one of the things that I think people, um, I know that people are are getting uh, more reluctant to do is press releases that are kind of clearly just advertising for a business. Um, so when I, I don't think this is giving away any trade secrets, when I was working at, uh, for Reach, uh, there was a big move to essentially refer press releases to the commercial team um, to try and sell, uh, you know, sponsored content, that kind of thing, um, rather than just regurgitate a press release. So the, the, the thinking being that if a company can afford, you know, has a budget to pay a PR firm, to put out a press release, they can pay for, uh, you know, an advertorial or something like that. Um, and uh, you know, you've got to appreciate that newspapers, news websites are in the business of making money. So rather than kind of essentially giving free advertising to a to a company, then they want to uh, you know find a way to find a way to monetize that. Um, and it and you know there's a, a, an advantage for the company as well because that will give them a uh, a um, uh, more control over what happens. But yeah, so the the, the kind of the, the press release that's very obviously just an advert uh, is not gonna it's not really gonna fly anymore. Um, so it's it's if you're if you're looking for for that kind of thing, it's got to have a it's got to have more of a a news angle, a news angle that's kind of interesting to the readers of the publication that you're pitching to, um, you know, uh, and that'll, you know, that'll depend. Some people will be very interested in kind of management changes at companies and things like that. And, but, you know, the general news people are not, gonna be, you know, not, not really going to be at all interested in that. So it needs to be some thoughts about uh, who it's going to. Uh, does that kind of, does that kind of, question yeah yeah no that's actually great and you've answered actually a couple of questions in this uh, uh, that I was going to ask later on uh, but I think it's um it's interesting because one of the first things that we always advise our clients is to make sure that their press release is not um, um, used as a marketing or ad- advertising material um, for for whatever they're doing but then Obviously, a lot of companies uh, see press releases as the like the a direct way uh, to make their announcement or to um, um, communicate that they're relaunching a new product, for example, or a new services. Um, so it's obviously we understand based on uh, previous conversations that we had with previous journalists that there is 
they are receiving a lot of press releases, obviously. Um, so our job is basically trying to help our clients and journalists at the same time be in the middle, uh, obviously, um, or find the middle ground where can they can both benefit from uh, a press release. So um, basically, we've said that every press release should be targeted. Um, if this press, press release was targeted for you, for example, uh, regarding a certain or a specific political, since you're a political um, um, journalist, uh, what is the preferred length, for example? What are the things that you're look, looking for in a press release that clients should have in mind? And also from obviously uh, other conversations that you had with colleagues from different departments, what are they looking for? What kind of advice that you can give our clients? Yeah, I think um, a, a bit of awareness about um, you know the person that you're that you're targeting. I'm not saying you know you don't have to go back and look through their entire kind of back catalogue of, of work and see what they've done, but I think it's it's important to at least kind of acknowledge that uh, you know to look at who at least what their job title is. So I. I um, to give an example, I uh, recently did a, a wrote a story from a think tank event where we had a, a you know a kind of prominent backbencher floating an idea for um, you know there should be a, a, a target for fifty percent of young people to uh, go and do apprenticeships um, as a kind of way of, of, of you know getting, giving people better jobs and improving the, the standing of apprenticeships and, and to reflect the, the the target from the 90s of 50% of young people going to university. Um, so I wrote, you know, wrote that up. And then a few a few days later or a week later or something, I received a, a press release from an organisation about um, essentially a new apprenticeship scheme on the basis that I'd written this story. And they, you know, they say, is that a link to the story? And, and you think, well, you know, I, actually that's not really... I. I I'm not a you know an education reporter. I'm not a uh, kind of in industrial correspondent or anything like that. Like I, you know, I only wrote about apprenticeships in the context of kind of debates about uh, the political situation and, and and you know improving um, standards of living in, in in parts of the country outside London and it all ties into the big you know one of the big political debates that we're having at the moment. But. It's, it's not kind of enough to, to sort of search for the keyword and like, which journalists have included this word in their stories recently. That's not, you know, that's not going to work. Whereas actually the one press release that I did end up doing something about uh, was, um, it was a, a kind of international development thing about COVID vaccines and was, uh, you know, international development is something that I'm interested, something I've covered before. So that's, you know, tick there it had a, a political angle calling for the government to do something basically so that's that works um and it and it kind of made a a story um that that was a a, a kind of um would be of interest to the general reader um so i think that's that's really the stuff that you've got to bear in mind when when sending these these things out is is really you know why are you sending these to people and there's you know then there are other ones that i i get that are just completely out you know completely out of my kind of area of interest and i don't know why i get them presumably i want some sort of list you know mailing list somewhere that you know, by accident and i just get sent out blanket um but uh yeah it, 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 that's what you want is a kind of an awareness of who it is you're targeting why you're doing it and why they should be interested and it's probably got to be more than oh they wrote one story a couple of weeks ago that mentioned this thing um going back again to something that you mentioned earlier um if companies don't send press releases for example where do you get your news uh, from um well uh all kinds of places so um in the kind of political sphere it will be from uh you know the debates in parliament briefings from the political parties um we you know reports from think tanks which will often be accompanied by press release um and in that sense it's, it's useful to highlight that this thing is coming um you know have a 
have a read of it. Um, but again, it'll you know, it, it, the obviously the, the think tank's name or whatever is you know will be mentioned, but, but it's it's more about what they're actually saying. Um, where else? Uh, you know, uh, well, the same way the journalist gets stories everywhere through your through your contacts, through uh, you know public you know public documents, through freedom of information requests. Um, all kinds of things like that. Um, so, yeah, the 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 press releases are, uh, you know, they're competing not just against other press releases, but against a whole kind of slew of other things. And I think the other thing that that it's important to mention there is that um, journalists uh, want to get the story themselves. So if, you know, if there's something that I can say to my editor, I, you know, I did this bit of, you know, investigation and, and I spoke to so-and-so and I, you know, pulled up these records and I've come up with this story myself, that um, makes me look better than if, oh, well, I was sent a press release by, you know, such and such an organisation. Um, so I think, I think that's one of the other reasons why press releases sometimes uh struggle to um to get a hearing because it's a it's a kind of well it's it's all a bit easy which you know sometimes you want an easy story but it's you know it's it's a it's, it's something that you that you've really got to kind of bear in bear in mind that yeah just just sending an email is kind of well all right that's fine but if i'm if i've got something that i'm doing myself that's what i'm going to focus on how um press releases targeted to the UK are different from those targeted to other English-speaking countries? I think the, the key things are, um, as ever, is kind of, if you're targeting stuff at the UK, is to make sure that you're aware of what's going on in the UK. Um, so, uh, you know, don't send a press release on a bank holiday, or the public holiday for, you know, uh, people outside the UK, uh, because um, most of us won't be working, and uh, you know we'll come back the next day and maybe have a look at it. But uh, it's you know there'll be hundreds of emails, and then there'll be today's emails as well, and all that. So that's you know th that's the kind of thing to avoid. Um, and again, look at the the kind of the the cycle of of what's happening. So if you're you know, talk about political journalism. If you're looking to target political journalists, don't send something between 12 and 1 on a Wednesday because at 12 till about 12.40 is Prime Minister's Questions, which is probably the kind of set piece event of the political calendar uh, and all the journalists are watching that. So, um, you know, and then for the next 20, 30 minutes of, of writing it up and trying to follow things up from it and stuff like that. So it's, you know, it's just going to get lost. So yeah, have a, have a think about the kind of the cycle there and, and what's happening and things like that. And, 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 you know, in some cases that, you know, that, that's the, that's the kind of fixed, fixed points in the week. Um, but then there are, you know, if major scandals breaking, it's probably not a great time to be sending press releases. And sometimes, you know, you can't have that. You'll send an email and then five minutes later something will happen. And, uh, what do you think in general people here uh, prefer? Um, I think I, it's, 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 difficult to, it's difficult to say. It's one of those things where it, it's got to be a balance, which is a really annoying answer. But I think you don't want, you know, you don't want to be too chatty unless you've actually met them. But, you know, there are people I've, spoken to many times before who are also you know comms officers and will will you know have a kind of uh such more a chattier style when they send me stuff that's because i know them um if you don't know them uh, you know if you're too familiar it can be a little bit annoying um but obviously if you're really formal it just sounds a bit weird um so you know if you if you're if you're approaching someone who you don't know, it might be better. I mean, I wouldn't just send the press release um, because, uh, you know, you get that and then you think, why am I going to read this? I think, you know, you want to be sending something that has a couple of lines at the top, you know, 
that say, and it doesn't, like I say, it doesn't have to be, you know, having to go, how hi, how are you? How's your family? All that. You don't have to get, you know, don't do that. But, you know, talk about uh, just a couple of the sentences about what the news story is and why I should be interested in it. Because um, if you just send the press release, I'll be honest, I'm probably not going to read it unless the, unless the subject line is really interesting. Um, but if you send something like that, you know, um, then that's a kind of, that's uh, that's helpful. Um, I think the other thing that's good to send, I don't know if you're going to ask about this, this later, but it's just coming to my head, so I thought I'd mention this now, is, uh, is have a kind of a way of... Um, uh, Allowing the allowing the journalist to, um, to do some journalism to talk to somebody. And I don't mean the kind of you can talk to our CEO or our managing director or you can talk to our head of comms or whatever. I mean, if you're you know, and again, this won't apply to every um, press release because some organisations this just won't this just won't be applicable for. But if there's a way of having a kind of case study that I can ring up. And, you know, someone who's willing to talk to me um, about their, um, you know, so I, in a, a previous job, I had a press release from the council about their kind of programme for, um, you know, they're providing a bit of money for people who uh, were in difficulty because of the pandemic. And they were kind of, they sent me a, a release about the success of this. And I just thought, well, you know, that's quite interesting. But actually what I want to do is talk to, one or two of the people who have received some of this money about what their situation was and you know how it helped them and, and to be able because you know journalism is ultimately about people um so if you can provide me with a way to to talk to somebody and get that human angle and ideally talk to somebody myself and get my own quotes rather than having to use the ones that you've sent to however many journalists um then i think that's really useful uh, just it it, it it allows me to differentiate my work from everyone else's and um and you know make, and it just makes the story better which is better you know better for you as well yeah no that's interesting actually you've said that because obviously that's one of the things that we discuss regularly with clients or with with other people as well as well in general is that providing someone not just a spokesperson, but someone that you can, um, you know, speak, the journalist can contact and speak with. So I think this is really important. Yeah, thank you. Um, actually, your previous answer, was, um, um, I thought about two other questions while you were answering. Um, the first one is basically you said, don't send any press releases to, uh, during bank holidays. Uh, so basically my question is, when is the best time to send a press release and what times do they have to avoid aside from Wednesday and back on holidays? Um, but I'm not saying avoid Wednesday's bank. I'm just saying if you're targeting political reporters, don't send it between 12 and 1. But um, yeah, in, in terms of more generally, yeah, uh, avoid public holidays. Don't send me something at 5 o'clock on a Friday because I want to go to the pub because I'm a journalist. Um, or, or kind of you know or any, anything that's kind of uh in the in the evening is not is not really gonna get picked probably not gonna pick, get picked up unless it's spectacular um if it's something that requires more uh work so if it's something you know if you're releasing a report and you've embargoed it until the next day send it as early as possible because I want to be able to read the report and, and digest it and all that kind of stuff. Um, and again, if it's, if it's, if it's a story where, you know, like we just mentioned where there's a kind of a human angle and people we can talk to again, send it earlier in the day so that we can say, right. Yep. I want to talk to this person trying to arrange that call or meeting or whatever it is over the day. Um, so it's not all kind of rush at the end of you know, the afternoon. Um, I always think first thing on a Monday is a bit of a challenge as well because I've already got two, three hundred emails to, or more than that, to, to trawl through. So it's just a, a, a number, you know, getting set up for the week and figuring out what I'm going to do. So it's that's probably a time to avoid. Um, but apart from that, I think, um, yeah, most days are probably fine. But yeah, like the mornings are better than the afternoons. 
Um, and it all, that's just a kind of general thing. It will depend on what the content of the press release is. It depends who you're sending it to. If you're sending it to a, a website, it's slightly less important than if you're sending it to a, you know, a, a print organisation because they, you know, want to get it in, the, if you want it in the newspaper, although, you know, nobody really does just print anymore. Um, Prime uh, So, yeah, that's less applicable. But I think, yeah, the, the more time that you give people to do the story, the better. That's great. And uh, the second question is, how do, you, how do you prefer to be contacted by organizations and companies? Uh, what's the best way to contact you or communicate with you? Uh, email. Um, the, yeah, email me is the, is the best way of doing it. Um, because um, you know, because if you if you call me, you're I'm only going to say, oh, okay, that might sound interesting. Can you send me some more detail in an email? So you might as well just send me some detail in an email. Um, in terms of following up, um, I think the message from a lot of journalists is don't. Um, you know, if we haven't answered. There's a reason. Um, if, but I also appreciate that you know some uh, managers and clients will be more persistent. Say, oh, you must follow up with people. So if you're going to do that, then um, I guess yeah, uh, uh, an email again is 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 better because ringing people is you know I've got other things to do and I might not be there. Um, but uh, if you really have to call us, then that's yeah. I guess that's 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 kind of going to get you an answer. Might be a might get you an answer quicker than um, than emailing if you really need it. But I think yeah, email's the best way of contacting basically any journalist. Yeah, perfect. That's great. Thank you so much, Chris. Uh, this is basically that was the last question I had, or actually no, this is the last question I have. Sorry. <laughs> uh, do you have any final recommendations for our client? Um. No, not really. Uh, I think just I think the things that I I'd reiterate are that there is there is definitely a move against press releases that are just advertising. So try and avoid doing that, um, and try and think about who you're targeting. Obviously, it takes a bit more effort to do that than just kind of blanket emailing a list, but you're more likely to be successful. Um, and um, and yeah, make sure there's a there's a kind of story that's actually of interest to kind of the, the the audience of that publication um whatever it is um and an opportunity if if possible to have a, a human face and and someone to speak to that's uh yeah that isn't like you said isn't a spokesperson isn't a kind of senior executive is a, a someone that the, the reader might be able to identify with i think that's probably probably the three things i'd, I'd say yeah, that's wonderful. Thank you so much, Chris. Uh, I appreciate your time um, and the valuable information that you've shared with us as well. And just before, before we end, uh, I would like to encourage everyone to visit our website, um, Cision.com, if you'd like to know more about our services. I'll also um, be adding our social media handles, PA and Crisis and Cision as well. Um, so feel free to follow us, drop us an email or a comment, um, and we'll definitely get back to you to answer um, your questions or help you out find more. Uh, thank you very much.